Hello, Charlie TCG here, and welcome back to Looking Ahead, the series where I break down and analyze the meta what's happening over in Japan and how that impact Taiwan. Today's a really exciting one. We get 151 finally after what four months in our legal play at the end of this um, week. But let's look at what the impactful cards are from the 151 set and have a really impact in the meta. Taking a little bit of a back burner from looking at Gardevoir and Giratina, they definitely are the most popular decks in Japan, definitely the ones that are dominating the most. So let's park those sort of looking there, looking at the other decks which could shine through with the 151 cards as well as looking at the final cards that got released from rising surf some of them aren't exactly impactful but there's one card which i generally think could see quite a lot of play in one particular deck which is in fact win the um, yokohama champions league so i hope you enjoyed the video and let's jump into the new cards so as you heard the winning deck it's a lightning pokemon tapu coco i feel like the only downside for this card is it's a one cost um retreat but it does work on un obviously under um peach court but has an amazing revenge spark attack 30 damage and if your one of your pokemon was knocked out during your last turn this attack does 90 more damage and the opponent's active pokemon is paralyzed now if we don't know anything paralyzed is the best special condition they can't move from the active spot we do obviously the format has got quite a lot of switching cards like switch escape rope obviously lost box has so many options but potentially some decks um, aren't playing as much why do you think blocks and likes managed to get all the way to the finals in the Oklahoma champions league people aren't respecting having um um using the switching outs so potentially this type of coco could be really good buying yourself a turn setting up your pokemon on the bench it is only a two energy so it's really easy to get like the flapping and energy plus um um potentially attachment from either raihan or even the likes of an electric generator so really easy to set up the other attack of 180 isn't too bad but honestly the revenge shock here is honestly incredible Cloth is a really interesting card. This is like our third or fourth like printing of Cloth as a card. So Pokemon are absolutely loving this new card. And for a double turbo turbo energy, 30 damage. And if it's affected by a special condition, 160 more. Now, if we have the likes of the Ancient Barnett, which is coming out, we also have the likes of um, the Parasect. And we also have the um, card which lets you attack even if, under special condition if you're asleep. So there are ways around it for you to do 190 damage under special condition. If you're playing DT 170, isn't terrible you hit for relevant weaknesses against the likes of Maridon and Arceus um so potentially it's cloth season play or maybe just GLC but honestly it's fun and goofy and if Mango is all right for fighting colors 20 damage plus 20 more for each of your opponents and bench Pokemon doing 120 damage is fine again having choice belt you could hit the one hit KO on Arceus it's all right sort of thing it's another sort of attacking option potentially you could use that in other sort of decks here the card which I did miss um, talking about a couple of weeks ago is Tulip. And honestly, it's really interesting because it's up to a combination of like, psychic Pokemon and basic psychic energies. Now, I think this could go well in the likes of Goldengo. With Goldengo really wanting to have as many energies in its hand as possible to get discarding factor, you could easily play Supporter and it's like superior energy retrieval for free. Getting those free psychic energies we can easily be sorted out the likes of Fog Crystal and that new Earth and Seal um, tablet got released last week. Potentially, this could see some play in that one. Obviously, Gardevoir, you can use it for discarding factor of Curlia's um, or potentially getting energy you might need to have if you're just one short and need that attachment. So honestly, really interesting sort of card here. Potentially could see play. I think Tapu Coco will see some play Mariah or maybe a one card um, in other decks as well. Potentially even like Lost Box that could easily fit in there. Buy yourself a turn, really to power up your board say. So honestly, Tapu Coco could really see a lot of play. Now, let's look at some of the impacting cards that the 151 format has had on you know, over in Japan in the last couple of weeks. Sorry, months really. And let's obviously start with DTE Mu. This has definitely seen a huge rise of popularity over the last couple of months as we've kind of seen it kind of become really, really powerful. But once Spiritomb really got released and kind of like shut down so many Future Strike, um, so, um, obviously Future Strike Systems ability with um, Genesect, people kind of went to that um, Future Strike um, version so they could purely use that drawing factor. But as Spiritomb has kind of been taken out of people's decks, even Drapion, even Mew did win. Obviously, it's a fusion build, but the DT build can be that hugely disruptive. As we're in a format where there's so much ability um, in there, if you look at the likes of Xi'an Pao, even Arceus, heck, even um, Charizard and Giratina, kind of a little bit, and when we're riding, there's so many dark types that really rely on abilities in the early and late game. So having Mute really punish your opponent is incredibly good. That's why DTE is absolutely incredible. And what's amazing is we play this grab hook arm, which is to look at your opponent's hand and choose a Pokemon there and play at the bottom of their deck. This is really good because number one, you look at your opponent's hand and really judge if you want to literally judge or I own them. And two, you get to get rid of one of their a really, really powerful Pokemon. You can get rid of their Luminion for boss for game. You can get rid of a Bexcalibur they might need to have to get an NG um, accelerator for next. And you can get rid of so many different archetypes. And I really like that because it really 
plan your turn like is path to speaker really impacting next turn is the top deck going to really inf- like really impacting their sort of um, strategy i like the box of disasters really helping the likes of mew i'm uh, sorry god of why there's so many really good ways about this how this mew deck is going to be really powerful and dte build is really good I um, mean, always have to, to get that big one hit KO. I think the Grappler Arm is really good for that disruptive capability. And yeah, we could see the return of DT Mew as people take our Spirit Tomb and people go back to abilities. DT Mew can go in there to really punish um, those sort of archetypes. The other one is Blastoise. This is a brand new archetype. But honestly, I love this card. I think it's really interesting. Um, it has um, does takes 30 less damage, so already 360 HP, which is huge. For two water energy, you discard um, up to two water cards from energies from your hand. And if you do, it does 140 more damage for each water energy. 280 is definitely a very good number. That pretty much KOs everything. And what better partner to have it with Palkia? It's a really good attack in Palkia. There's 260, has 280 HP, and has that amazing um, star portal ability. We get to attach um, to three water ranges from Disco Power onto any of your Pokemon in play. So, already have that synergy with Blastoise. You can easily get it set up with having the likes of Irida, one of the best supporters right now in the game. And you have the likes of Energy um, Retrieval and Superior Energy Retrieval to really kind of like get all your energies out constantly whenever you need it. There's no need to have the likes of Backscalibur. I also like having them. Kindra is really good because I believe it does put some damage counters on here. Raihan and Melody is also really good for these energy acceleration. One, two, um, plus two, see, but obviously to the likes of Luminion and obviously Palkia. Really, really interesting archetype. I generally could see, and um, Blastoise could see some play a little bit. I like the Bibberall because it really helps in like Sviono play. Greninja is obviously really powerful. You play a high amount of um, Rare Candy because you want to search it from the likes of Irida. The one bad of VIP pass is like that I can only do it if I go first. So if I go second and get, get out search with Irida. So honestly, really interesting archetype. I do think Barstow could see some play. It may be a bit overshadowed by obviously the the bigger brother Charizard and the sort of format here with the Kanto starters. But honestly, Blastoise could be a really interesting, like a third different type of water archetype, which is very, very powerful, can easily get these big one hit KOs. Number one is Colorless Lugia. I've covered this quite a lot. Um, thank you so much for support on the video um, last week. Colorless Lugia is incredibly powerful. And this one here focuses a lot on some of the big 151 card. And that is Mew EX. Be prepared to have Mew EX in nearly every single archetype. I'm going to do a... Um, a buy list out in the next couple of days and I really hope it's going to be helpful for you to know exactly what cards which would be really beneficial in there and let's be no spoiler out right there Mewi X is definitely one of the strongest one here copying any of your opponent's active Pokemon with attack like likes of Giratina um, Arceus heck even like not Arceus um, Radiant Greninja and of course the Charizard it's really really powerful and that instant um, draw till three so it really helps in likes of Iona Renew to one or potentially likes or other sort of um, when you draw put your hand down as far as possible. Colorless Lugia is definitely the most popular way to play Lugia over in Japan because of that Mew EX, using that because it's three colors energy across attachment. You have Bravery Charm to have Snorlax, you have 200 HP, not affected by Sableye. You have Luxray, so you can instantly put down a Pokemon with have 150 HP and deal 180 damage, which is incredible for a single energy costman. Attachment, and a huge disruptive capability with four copies of boss and three Ionas. If you're not a big fan of Colorless Lugia, there's obviously still the Single Strike Lugia, which is exactly the same, but you played the likes of Mew EX. And I really like having the Mew EX in here because you're obviously playing loads of colors, um, sort of um, energy cost uh, attachment, and you can easily get those big one-hit codes and likes of those Pokemon, which I just mentioned. Another key card in this one, they do play that Cabalion, which has 30 more damage to your opponent's active dark Pokemon. Um, you don't use a protect, you purely use it for the ability, so you can get that big one-hit code on Charizard because I believe... Um, the likes of Tyranitar can just about um, get to um, 310, I believe 320 HP, so just 10 P HP short. Instead of like in playing the likes of the Vitality Band, um, you play the likes of Cabalion because you can easily get the likes of Nest Ball, Ultra Ball, and obviously Caption Aroma and Mesa Goza. This is really interesting. I do think this potentially could be played a lot more in art or format, as a lot of people over in America and the rest of Europe do love the single strike version of Lugia. Color Spell is definitely a lot more popular over in the Asian area, but I would love to see the colors version really see a huge amount of play over for us. Now, another deck archetype is Maridon EX. And Maridon EX is absolutely incredible. Not only did it just win the Yokohama and Champions League, it is incredibly utilizing the amazing cards that 151 has to offer. Obviously, Zapdos EX was quite a lot of people thought it would do well. It wasn't a huge amount of decks, but obviously it was in the winning archetype. It is incredibly powerful by doing that 120, and if there's any damage on one of your opponents and bench Pokemon, doing 90 more damage to one of their, that Pokemon, which is incredible. But it also uses that grab hook arm, which honestly... I quite like that because you're playing so much disruptive capability with Path to Peak, Judge, Iono, and Heavy Counts of Boss. 
that graphic arm just giving that little bit of information by looking at your opponent's hand is incredibly strong and i absolutely love that it's the way that mirage on ex is potentially going to be going in the 151 format Another card, let's look at some of the Arceus decks. Arceus is definitely one of the cards which has seen so much at play and ever since it was released at the start of last year. And this one here really uses some of the really interesting cards it has to offer. We do play the Pidgeot line, which honestly does make a bit of sense. This was a bit of the archetype that a lot of people thought it was going to go with. The likes of like in, taking a place of Intellion, searching there for any card and pin it to your hand. It works really, really well here. And we can even use a new Pidgey if you don't get the energy attachment to Arc and, just, and you can't really get that. Some with Pidgey is pretty good because you could attach an energy to it and then search your deck for two basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Alolan Volpix does make quite a lot of sense in these style decks here. There are so many archetypes right now, which mainly attacks with abilities. Charizard, um, Gardevoir, Sheehan Pao, so many of these big power archetypes. Heck, even Maridon, like I just mentioned, and even Blastoise as well. So many of them have abilities. So having this in Alolan Volpix could really help punish your opponent and can be set up super duper easily. And obviously Mew EX just fits in nicely. You might go, why is Mew EX in here? There's no um, Raihan and stuff like that. Well, there is this, like, I believe it's called Penny, which is really powerful. Get to move two of your poke energy from your Pokemon to another one. This works really well with an energy attachment. Use your Penny, and then you can instantly attack with Mew EX and Radiant and Greninja, which I absolutely love having these two incredibly powerful archetypes really sorting nicely with this Arceus deck here and really, really using the full effect of 151 cards that have to offer. Potentially, we could see this way how Arceus decks could potentially go down the route of. Another one is Arcdura Umbreon. Um, yes, um, this actually does play a one um, 151 card, which is that Ditto, which I really love here if you have it on in play. I believe it's in the action spot or if it's on the bench, you may search your deck for one of your uh, basic Pokemon and just replace it with it. This is really good because it's like your fifth Arceus or your second, um, your third Umbreon or your third Duraladon, heck, even your second copy of Spiritomb. This is really, really good and powerful card because you can instantly search your deck for stuff. You can stay on the bench for now. Obviously, it's going to be Sableye and... Um, Greninja very much easy fodder. We can easily replace that with the likes of an Arceus or the like of an Umbreon. So you don't need to worry about um, missing out on any of the um, attachment and around there or potentially even a Pokemon starting because that Ditto is honestly incredible and really, really powerful. I don't know if Arctur or Umbreon will actually see its big return, but it's nice to see there are some 151 cards that are going into it. And looking at the other one, we're looking at this Arczard. Yes, Arceus Charizard, a deck which has seen a lot of play here. And I've got a video talking about how I think Charizard is positioned right now in the meta in a couple days' time. And this one does play only a couple of the 151 cards. This plays the new copy of that 70 HP um, Charmander, which definitely really, really helps the deck. And they're not easy targets on Sableye, heck, even some like even Greninja. And we are not playing the likes of a new Charmeleon with 100 HP, opting to play the 90 HP one. But we do play the new Pidgey as well. Like I mentioned, this card is incredible in the early game here. It's to search your deck for two basic Pokemon, put it onto the bench, really does make this um, Charmander deck so much easier. Charizard, sorry. You're not relying too much on Battle VIP Pass. You're not relying on um, Artisan or even like, other cards as well here. Having that Pidgey is really, really powerful. Getting at any of those basic Pokemon cards, which you potentially might need to have in play. I really love this card here. I'm really excited to see how the meta is starting to go to evolve in this format. So Charizard could potentially be a lot stronger now we have that new um, Charmander. And to finish off, let's look at Quad Sableye. Like I mentioned, it does play that Ditto, which instigates the change, which becomes that um, fourth copy of Sableye from um, the Lost Mine version. Honestly, it's quite interesting. I thought I'd just cover it. I thought it was a deck which did really, really well over this past weekend in Japan. Just play one copy of a um, likes of a 151 card. But unfortunately, Lost Box doesn't really gain too many cards here. Only really that Ditto. And this was the only deck which actually covered that sort of archetype. So potentially, this could be a way of playing them. Um, obviously, Ch Sableye is incredibly powerful and could see a way to really abuse that amazing power. Can instantly get a turn to attack. But, um, of Lost Mine of the likes of these amazing cards of like Chorus. Um, um, lost vacuum and obviously the set comfy and multiple switching cards potentially could be an avenue of way the deck could evolve so i hope this was really helpful looking at the um, top plane placing the 151 archetypes over this past weekend in japan really helping with your testing and understanding exactly where the meta is going to evolve it main sort of question i want to talk to you is that can anything actually beat tina and gardevoir i may mention all these really fun really cool decks i didn't even mention my favorite which is hasui and zoroark and Star. coming back with that do trio gets to put some damage counters on it and you get to draw a card but tina and guardi are still the most popular decks the ones that are winning the most um, of these um gym challenges at all the places so potentially 
that may be a little bit outplaced, even like she empowered them incredibly well in this format as well. Raising Surf, can that exactly change the meta? We get that at the end of this week, or believe it is next weekend. So we do get some Raging Surf very, very soon. So it's really nice to see exactly how this is going to actually impact the meta at all. Is Garsh on BX? Is Tapu Koko? Is like likes of the other Terra Pokemon we've got to see her? Or do we have to wait until the end of next um, month or the month after? I'm sorry, yeah, next month for us to really get um, new cards and archetypes like some Paradox Rift. And the other question is pretty much important. Will Mew EX be in every deck? As we saw here, Mew EX isn't really vital to lots of people's strategy. It's a really good tech archetype and that easily to get to draw draw three cards if you get ionotorally low hand size and the amazing Adrenaline hack to kind of copy any of your opponent's active and Pokemon's attack. Potentially could see a lot of play in the likes of Guard White. Heck, even it could be used in loads of them. Lots of archetypes with the likes of Mirage Gate, but it's very, very situational in certain texts. So, hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, please make sure to like and like, subscribe, and comment down below what archetype from 151 are you most excited for? As you heard, I'm a huge fan of Syrian Zorowak. I'm definitely going to be covering that in the next couple of weeks' time. And I really hope it is going to be that most powerful archetype. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, like I said, please make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Bye for now.